everybody to Survive in Advance on the Gruley Crew Sports Network. I'm your co-host for Survive in Advance, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host. Did I say I was the host? I did that just to screw with him because it makes him mad. Did I say host or co-host, Steve? I, you know, I, I, I don't, Mike, I don't listen to you anymore. It doesn't matter. You can say what the hell ever you want to say anymore. I just don't even listen to you anymore. Oh. So it's irrelevant. You could have said I was the biggest jerk in the world, and it, I, I would be correct because. So from now on, I'm just going to do it like coming this. on today. I would like to introduce my co-host coming on today, the biggest new jerk contributor in the world who talks over everybody constantly, Steve Risley. You know why I do that? Because I'm just smarter than you. Yeah. I thought it was just so you could try to prove you're smarter than me because of your inadequacies. But it probably has to do something with the selling Viagra for years. Our guest today is from the APC agency. <laughs> Help me welcome to the show. Hey, Mike, I Sarah talked to Wendy Durant. last night. She, so you're she, talking I'm over me her again. A sample bottle of Viagra. I, we don't need it because I don't Valentine's eat meat. Day. I'm on a plant based diet. It out this morning. <laughs> you're such a sissy. All right, Sarah, I'm sorry for Steve, but and I'll say that probably at least 37 times over the next 45 minutes. How you 48 doing, in the next 30 minutes, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord, don't make a drinking game of that, huh? That would be oh, dangerous. Oh, God, we'd all be drunk as hell in 10 minutes. But... <laughs> We're not Andy Cohen. <laughs> all right, Sarah, word and... <laughs> Sarah, since Steve tricked you to come on to the show, you want to tell us a little bit about the APC agency? I mean, I, let's go. In other words, let's Sarah, introduce yourself and tell us all about you. Because if you're going to put um, up with us idiots for the rest of your life, you're going to need to. We're going to need to know no about you so we can that, abuse you like we abuse each other. Right. I feel like I just have to open the door to all the criticism. Okay, I got this, guys. I got this. Um, so my agency, we do all the off the field management for professional athletes. Um, just manage the day to day lives. Anything that is non related to their contract and their actual like moments on the field, the ice, whatever it may be. Simple. Eliminate distractions and performance goes up. Proven fact. There that you go. True. Well, me and Steve could use your services, but we don't make enough money to afford <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually noticing that. I'm noticing yeah. that. Can Everybody you, notices <laughs> that. Can I mean, you give us a discount that, if we give you some that. air time? <laughs> I mean, We're nothing you know, but we, we, can t- we, we can talk about it, but I feel like you guys are a little high maintenance, so you'd be on like the higher spectrum of the services anyway, so yeah, not sure a discount all right. helps all that much. Well, all Sarah, you got to do to keep was... Steve under control is like once a day, let him p- send you a picture of his NCAA championship ring to brag, and then tell him how great he is, <laughs> and then you're fine. <laughs> It's that yeah, you just wish you had one to send out to, Mike. You know, you wish you had uh, one to send have, out to the same we, thing. Hold on, we be. have a Twitter message from somebody that's listening. Yes, somebody is listening. Uh, we have <laughs> Dale from Boulder, Colorado, who wants to know how uh, long it'll gotta be. Got to be one of Sarah's friends. Hold, hold on. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> got to be because she knows everybody in Boulder. But it, She's it, from Colorado, you does. idiot. Read her profile. I already, actually, I'm the one that told you she was from Colorado because you don't do real good with reading um but what the question here is what are you dale just wants to know he said this is the first time that he's heard us go four minutes without you mentioning that you played for bob knight (laughs) that that is actually true because steve you know like the first (laughs) time i talked to you on the phone oh the first thing i heard out of your mouth was bob knight don't start this Yep. I have Bob nothing else in my second, life. But Bob Knight was first. Oh, this is the thing. Um, We've had on, like, Robert Brazil is a Hall of Famer, Jackie Sherrill, all these guys, Oliver Luck. It, it, it never fails. Steve's first question turns <laughs> around into, do you know I played for Bob Knight? <laughs> yeah, but here's the, I, I, I want to really poke fun at him with this, but, you know, I mean, the only way to know, you know how you find out somebody went to Notre Dame. They tell you, right? Like, so I fall into that category. I'm always like, so that one time when I was at Notre Dame, so I kind of feel his pain there. I feel like you got to drop it when you can. Well, see, I, I was sure, at I Indiana got, State, so I'd Notre never Dame bring that play up. Football. I got recruited by Notre Dame to play football and basketball. Notre sure he did, by Dan Digger Devine Phelps. And Digger Phelps. Yeah. And Dan he Devine. Did. And Dan Devine. And, and, then, and then Bob Knight. I, I was actually had verbally committed, and then all of a sudden – you know, Bob Knight calls me up one day oh, and here says, we go. I'm, I walk in the I house, apologize to everybody answer right the now. phone, it's Bob Knight. I said, yeah, right, bullshit. And uh-huh. they said, no, it was Bob Knight. 
And within 10 minutes, he asked me if I wanted to play at IU. And I said, okay, fine, but you got to call Coach Phelps and Coach Devine and tell them that I'm not coming to Notre Dame. And that's my story, and I'm sticking and to it. And then I've talked to Digger Phelps before. Digger Phelps said that was the biggest party in Notre Dame history when Bob Knight called and said that. <laughs> like, I had Kelly Trapuca calling anymore. me. I know. Kelly Trapuca <laughs> was right. excited, too, because they had a chance to win. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're going to start Kelly off. Because Kelly wouldn't have been Kelly Trapuca to find a gunner. Wait a minute, i got questions. Okay. Sarah. We okay, so Sarah, Sarah, yeah. Sarah, we, we gotta get, we got to introduce you first. got to get you into the mixer. You're not an agent, right? You don't go negotiate contracts. You don't do that part of it. Do not. You nope. don't. You don't do any stay of that. Far, far away. Stay far you away. Stay from far away. So, do, do you partner and work with agents? I mean, are you kind of like a, a consort to them, or do you work with them in terms of telling them, "Here's, you know, I mean, this is my client. This is what he likes, or she likes, or they like, or don't like." So, I mean, you're a concierge service, basically, correct? Yeah, correct. And it's I partner with agents across all different sports, and it's you know I my goal is to work closely with them because it eliminates a lot of work for them as well if I can partner with them because I mean an agent will tell you like they have so much going on with so many of their clients and it's contracts, it's marketing, it's all those things that if I can take off their plate in addition to their athlete's plate, the the nitty gritty details of the day to day it makes everyone's life a lot easier. And then at least it's streamlined. And then everybody knows where to go for certain things and we can collaborate and work together. Simplifies everybody's life. In my opinion, it's, it's been a great success. It's, you know, agents have a tough job. Like it, their job is tough. And I, it is not a world I would have ever wanted to go into. And, you know, I, we always joke, but I mean, Jerry Maguire is pretty, pretty spot on with the agent life. I mean, you got to, you got to grind and, and stay on top of these guys. And there's always somebody else waiting for your client. And I, I don't envy them. They have a tough job and they, you know, there are some incredibly talented agents out there. Okay. Now I've been, I've been married 35 years and my wife will tell you I'm incredibly high maintenance. I mean, <laughs> what are some of the idiotic you. <laughs> things? Well, you, you tell me I'm high maintenance. What are some of the idiotic things you've got to deal with on a day-to-day basis as being a concierge service, and don't mention names because we don't want to get your relationship with, but, but I mean, like, do you have to have, like, blue M&Ms, you know, in a room somewhere, or some player's <laughs> got to have red roses in his room when he's getting his $180 per diem to eat when all food meals are provided for him? I mean, what, what are some of the crazy things you've got to deal with day in and day out? I will say I have know. narrowed. I mean, yeah, I mean, people love that side of it, right? Like, it's the lifestyle side. But my, my guys now are, are very different than the guys I started with. You know, when I started the business 10 years ago now, I mean, it's like 10 years ago, April, I was more willing to be a back and call service, whereas now I've built it. There are boundaries, there are time frames, and my guys now are very mellow and low-key, and they fit into this greater big picture for me, which is I want to develop them – um, into what their second career is going to be as well. So networking with them, connecting with them, but also helping them with their basic needs. And so the ones I work with now are very, are very easy, quite honestly. Um, the high maintenance stuff was when I started. I mean, I had a guy and I, like I had a guy one time, he was out in LA and it was every 10 minutes I was getting a phone call. He was in LA just for fun out clubbing with some people. And and at one point at three, two o'clock in the morning, whenever bars closed in LA and wherever I was, and I pick up the phone and he's like, I need a, I need a car. You need to get me a car. You need to get me a car now. And it was like, okay, step to the curb and put your hand up. Like, is there a yellow cab driving by? Like maybe getting that, like, how about that? Let's do that. Um, but you mean guys are, they're, they're crazy with certain things, but you know, for the most part, it's, I don't know. It's 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 pretty chill. Well, they wait a minute here now. Only... I feel your pay. I feel your pay there because I, I my wife has an Uber account. I don't. If I'm somewhere, I'm like, honey, <laughs> give me an Uber. I and she's like, call yourself. I'm like, I don't even. I don't have an Uber account. Call you. Know, well, go call hail a cab. I'm like, no, you do it for me. You know, it's like well, I actually have to cancel doctor appointment. I, I call service. my wife. My wife is an angel. I mean, 35 years of married to me, she's an angel. But I, Sarah, I, I understand exactly where you are and i geez you know i'm not a big time athlete i'm not an athlete anymore at all but it's like i i want somebody else to do that crap for me i don't want to do that well yeah i don't want to call my doctor and tell him i wasn't going to make my 345 appointment appointment yesterday because i didn't want to fight the 405 and the 101 
and and and, and the, the the five and the one seventy and the one thirty four to get to Burbank. I didn't want to do that. So it's like I'm not going at three forty five. Call and cancel the appointment, reschedule it. And she's but like, Why don't you do it yourself? Like, I'm like, No, you do it for me. You just that, gotta interrupt him, Sarah, because of, he will continue to oh, ask the same question. Okay. He'll, he'll just go. <laughs> I no, but I mean I think that's part of it, right? Is there are things that people call me to do that I'm like that I find so normal now, which is maybe maybe part of my mental problems, right? But um I think when, when you get started, it's like you, like, listen to some of this stuff, and you're like, what? what? You want me to do what? I mean, and it's just mind-blowing, and you're willing to do it because you're like, okay, well, I guess you're compensating me for this, so that makes sense. Like, drive your car to be serviced and wait for it, pick it up, drive it back. Like, okay, I guess that makes sense. But then you start to evolve as a business and start to say, okay, what are the priorities of, like, what, what is it that I actually do? And, and what are the services that I really want to provide? But there are some that are out of the blue that are just kind of funny. But, you know, you got you to gotta just roll with it sometimes because, uh, I mean. What's the funniest the, one? Give, give, me, give me the funniest one. What's the funniest one you've had to do? I mean, if you can't, you can, I hate putting people on spot to come up with the funniest one. But is there something that says, like, this was absolute horse bucky that I had to do this and I did it? Is there one, you know? Well, there was one time I, got, I had a guy, there was one time I had booked a guy a trip and it was like this amazing, like he was going down to, um, it was my, it must have been Miami. Anyway, regardless, he was going and he was, he, I booked him at the Four Seasons and it was like, you know, the simplest trip in the world for me to book. Cause I was like, Oh, I got no budget. And I just, you know, whatever it is, what it is. And I, this was like seven years ago. And then he called me complaining about the room and I was like, hold on you're complaining about the four seasons and he was like the sheets are shit and this and that and I was like hold on you're complaining about the four seasons and he was like this is what's wrong and he was adamant like he was adamant like this was wrong and that was wrong and I'm like thinking to myself you like couldn't even stay at a motel six when you were growing up like how is the four seasons not good enough all of a sudden so we had to order the four seasons. I called the concierge. They ordered a new sheet at a higher count. And I, I mean, it was crazy, but I was like, this was supposed to be the easiest trip I'd ever planned. And because it was, it was the four seasons. Have you ever gone to the four seasons and complained about staying at the four seasons? I've been at the four seasons in New York and, and yeah. yeah and, and I got to tell you what, it, yeah, the four seasons is great, but I'm laughing because we stayed at the Waldorf, my wife and I, and I did the same thing at the Waldorf. Oh. I made him change Oh, my the God. Sheet You're bougie. Because... You are bougie. <laughs> and and oh we're staring out at Central Park, and my wife's got her favorite room at the Waldorf, and we're staying there. And, and I'm like, we called out a complaint because the sheets are kind of smelly or stale, like somebody has smoked in the room or something, and made him come up and change the sheets. So I feel his pain. That's important. Yeah, but what, were you upset about that. the sheet? Were you upset about the sheet count, or just the sheet being like? What does the sheet count? What does the sheet count? I, I, I get my sheets at Target. Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> oh God! And you're complaining about the Waldorf. Okay, so the the sheet count. The better the sheet count, the better the sheet. Like it feels I know better. what sheet count There's is. There's a difference in no, texture. You yeah. Are you know. sure? Are he you don't sure? Know. I yeah, I, I know. Yeah, what Egyptian he sheet count? Know. Linens and everything. Yeah, I. I mean, I, like I said, it's not my. It's, that's it's one of the things you dump on my wife for 35 years to say, go get us nice sheet counts and go get us nice sheets. But then we have two Australian shepherds who sleep on our bed with us, and by the morning they're so covered in hair, you have to go rewash them anyway. It doesn't so it matter. Doesn't matter. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter because yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. I just think oh, it's like God, it's, it's a very hilarious. fascinating thing. It's a very fascinating thing though when you call the Four Seasons and even their concierge is like yeah. radio silent on the other line, and they're like, "I'm you wh- what?" <laughs> but here's the it, thing I will it, say: it, like this is this is why you stay at nice hotels, right? These people, that concierge service was on it. They were like, mm-hmm. "Got it, no problem. Yeah. We'll take care of it." But, I mean, I was on the phone until 5 o'clock in the morning or whatever, getting everything situated. Yeah. Again, this was a two-day trip that was supposed to be turnkey. But, it, you know, it makes for, again, one, it makes for good stories. And, two, like, all those experiences that I had, like, make today a lot more of a, a lot easier experience. Because there's nothing that surprises me rarely anymore. Like, I mean, I'm sure something will come up now today that I'm 
flabbergasted by after saying that. Yeah. But. And I will say we, we we have never stayed in a hotel any nicer than the Four Seasons in, in on Fifth Avenue in New York City. I mean, it, we were treated like royalty, and we were just peasants. You know, we were on uh, our company's dime. We weren't paying for it, but they treated us. And the Four Seasons gets it right every time. You're right; they, they were on top of it. So, how big's your staff? I mean, how many people do you have? I mean, do you do this on your own, or do you have a staff of people that that take care of this stuff for you? So I, I mean, I'm the main, obviously, like the point that that funnels all the communication, um, and I work on all the sales side of it and getting new clients. But I have a staff of about five right now, um, and it's, you know, it's it's funny when you put processes in place and you're used to what's coming in, it's easy to prepare for it. So it's not, it's not, it's labor intensive in the fact that it's just you got to be ready to react quickly because nothing. What I have found is the hardest part of hiring people to work for me is reaction time because there are people they will say, they're like, okay, I'll get it done. And then in 10 minutes, I'm like, hey, where's the confirmation? They're like, oh, I'm going to do it in a little bit. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Well, you're not going to do it here anymore. But that's just the reality of this is like, it's, it's not a, hey, I'll do it later. It's a just stop and do it now. Like I always, I, you know, I mean, cell phone makes it easy now. Apple thankfully made it easy, but my, I have my computer with me all the time so that I can just stop, sit somewhere, get it done, and it's, and it's over and it's out, right? I mean, that's, that's why the business works because people want everything in today's day and age instantaneously. It's like Airbnb and, and Uber and everything else. is It's a click away when you want it. Yeah, yeah Mike, 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 you know, Mike just has his lovely wife uh, take his four-wheeler ATV down to get the propane tanks for his trailer refilled. Um, whenever he doesn't have heat you know in the what, house or Steve, can't cook. Steve, <laughs> what? everybody's what? getting tired of that. I mean, just because you work for <laughs> Pfizer and you have something, I mean, it doesn't mean you have to make fun of us little people. Hey, you don't have to look <laughs> down at people. people. You don't have to look down at people because you played for Bob Knight and you got a championship ring that looks like my class ring. I mean, it doesn't make you any better than me, Steve. I didn't ever <laughs> said I was. No problem. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, if it came down to it and the world was coming to an end, people like me would just eat you alive. Literally. Okay. Survivors. <laughs> survivors. No problem. All right. No problem at all. Uh, I know Steve, before we talk about something important like Major League Baseball Free Agency, wants to talk about the Westminster Dog Show. Yeah, I, did anybody, did, did either of you watch it last night? I, no. I know, did anybody see I don't what watch happened it. last night? I don't think it should exist. Well, wait a minute now. You, you know, we don't, we don't Sarah's a dog lover. I, I got what's three your, dogs. Your, your I have a name? dog show in my house every night. Well, hang on. What's your dog's name, Sarah? Bert. 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 Okay. Bert I got, I got two dog. Australian Shepherds and a blind miniature Australian Schnauzer who bangs into everything. And Mike, I know you got three dogs, so we're watching the dog show. Yeah, don't worry about my dogs' names up... or what kind they are. Just worry about you. What and are your Sarah. dogs' names? Or what you do have you have, Mike? Prick. What do you have? Huh? I've you probably got have a... three pit bulls. I've got a lab named a lab. Rambo. I, 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 he, Rambo, he, he, there you go. Yellow lab. Go figure. <laughs> what? He's named Rambo. I mean, we okay. actually got him from somebody that didn't want him anymore when he was one year old, and he was already named. We also have a coon dog we got from the shelter that we named Cooney after Jerry Cooney who fought Larry Holmes for the heavyweight championship and then we have a pit bull named Rondo and all three of our dogs were basically shelter dogs are about to be put on the street so we took them in and that's why I think the Westminster thing is bullshit Steve I mean the docking and the cropping I mean has been proven I mean the American Veterinarian Medical Association shuns the procedures and says that it is, you know, cruel and inhuman. So basically, you got a bunch of rich people to cut the dogs' tails and ears off to try to win some money or to make themselves look good. So I don't care what happened last night because I don't think it should exist. So you laugh. You claim that you love dogs, but you think it's all right to cut a dog's ears off or crop its tail for a competition. Uh, we we do neither. Uh, we don't do that. And it's kind of like being circumcised. They do that on this show. You watch. Kind of like being circumcised. I gotta think that's a painful process too. 
at some point in your life, whether you smart enough at to know it's painful or not. At some point in your life? Getting circumcised has got to be painful. Okay. What's that have to <laughs> do guys, with so docking tails or cropping dogs? Wait, wait. What, let's, let's, let's be fair, though. Like, every time you watch the Westminster show and the Golden Retriever doesn't win, I just I know. think that Most at that point, we all know it's biased. It's yeah. biased because – yeah. How do you not look at a golden retriever? Like, my golden retriever looks shaggy and has drool yeah. coming out of his mouth 90% of the time, but he still should probably win Westminster. And I'm pretty sure he can't see straight, and he definitely runs crooked. But that doesn't mean he shouldn't be a champion. That gives him character. No, that's where I was going with this. <laughs> First also, off, the whole deal was. That's not where you were going he with also, this, Steve, because you're going to tell us that some <laughs> atrocity happened at Westminster, and it did. Go ask every dog that's missing its tails or ears. All right. So, let him, let so him rich go. people let like him, I have two Australian shepherds who so are naturally mad. bred to have no tails. They 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 they're 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 naturally bred to have no tails. I hate they have to tell you butt. this, but I'm you not talking about an Australian shepherd, and you know that you're just trying right. to. Get and you know what? The Australian the shepherd is one of the few pure American bred dogs. The Australian shepherd is an American-made dog. American-made. It was dog. actually created in California. Uh, it, was, it was a breed between the uh, um, Bernie's Mountain Dogs What does that have to do with what the... I'm talking about? Nothing. I'm just telling you. Okay. But that dog never, so that dog what you're talking been about been has no the, bearing on what group. we're talking about. Continue. All right. Here's here's what happened. Colton, the ship perky, uh, a non-sporting it. group winner. The dog, they let the dog win the, the class. There's seven classes, you know, of dogs. There's herding, working whatever, you know, non-sporting, sporting. Well, continue the story, uh, please. Miniature. All right. So they, they have, and they let this dog win. All right. And it's the first time that this breed has ever won. Uh, and it's the cutest little dog in the world. I mean, you, you think of all the dogs that they're showing in the finals. It's like, this is the one I'd uh. vote for. Cause like, like Sarah says, it's like a golden retriever. It's just a cute, fun dog. Anyway, it, they come out and bring her parade out all seven of the dogs. And they, the judge immediately goes over and says, you have to leave. You can parade your dog around, but you have to leave because the judge, his partner, and I'll leave that at that. His partner Please do. Um, has had done breeding with the owners of this Shaperky. And so then they disqualify the dog. Yeah. And the, the dog, after the owners have raised this dog, nurtured this dog, spent money on this dog, groomed this dog, flown it to New York to be part of this, put it in danger of being on a United Airlines flight where no God knows what's going to happen to it if you get on a United plane with a pet. And, and then the judge, rather than recuse himself and say, you know what, I have a conflict, they say the dog has a conflict. It, but then this is a snob sport where they have one idiot in a tux with 2,800 dogs deciding who he thinks is the best dog. Hmm. You know, most decisions like that should be made by a jury of people okay, or I'm a gonna group of people. Okay, I'm going to solve this issue, though. I'm going to just solve the problem. Like, let's just solve okay. it. Because I know Steve, Steve is really trying hard to not have to talk about baseball today. But the, the thing <laughs> is, like, golden – Golden Retrievers are the champion dogs. Fact. Just yes. settle it. Just we have a golden. It. Larry Bird dog. Like, it doesn't our matter what it, what it, Larry what's Bird the Colton dog thing got to do with it. Colton, the, the official decided Colton didn't deserve to win. Steve is somebody saying that. No, Colton that, won. No, he no, didn't. Colton because won. they took Colton it away from him. No, King, no, King won. You're missing. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> for the 14th time, the same damn breed, the King, whatever, Terrier. Yeah, I mean, okay, so like Colton it's another little win. snobby rich dog so that somebody owns win. and dresses up and gets her hair cut right because they can on. afford You're to go to the groomer if a dog You said up Colton right. won. Did Colton win or lose? Colton won his 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 class. He was the winner of the non-sporting group. But then they he take lost. the seven group winners and put him in the best of show. Yeah. He got disqualified from best of show after he won the non-sporting group. Somebody needs okay. to do their damn homework really? and know. That you know if what, Grizzly's Steve? working for this hiring Sarah, that I only want blue M and M's in my Steve, in my Steve. Four Seasons Hotel. Sarah, this is this is the last yeah. week and a half we've had this discussion, and it was about officials, Steve. And what you said was in the NFC Championship game that they just need to get over it. Life's unfair. 
But yet, when it's a dog, you're going to complain about different. it? Why is the dog different, Steve? Life's unfair. You said that. You said no matter what any official ever decides, you have to realize life's unfair and learn to deal with it like a man. Now, See, that human is error. Like, human error. Human That's error. There you go. Human error. There you go. Human but error, Steve. Oh, all right. Fair. Very fair. Now, very fair. But the human what, have error, you, have you, what should have happened is but have you the looked, judge should have recused have himself anywhere? and said. Are you going to let Sarah ask a question, yeah. please? Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Have, go. I, need, I need to know the answer to this question. Have right. you consulted with Bobby Knight on who and how who he thinks should have won that? How? He <laughs> felt? I off. like Sarah. All right, this may be a one-time deal for you, Sarah. You know, <laughs> this may hey, not be Sarah. Itself. Sarah, you know how you own yes. ABC. I own this. So yeah. Don't worry about what he says. He is a small. I owner. own a part and of it too. He's becoming smaller so as he talks vote. more and more. <laughs> All right. My whole point is just that I think that they should have known that this was coming and somebody should have looked at this before they let the dog either not let the dog win the group or they should have said to the judge, you need to recuse yourself because you have a tie. And I understand they want to say we don't want to let judges pick winners that have a tie to that breed or that dog um, or anything like that. But this is just, you know, it it just sat wrong with me. And I, I didn't get to see Real Housewives of Beverly Hills last night because I was watching the West Coast. you were watching dog the dog show. show. That is so sad. Yeah. yeah. And then this comes up at the last minute, and it's a cute little dog. So, and, yeah. you know, then you got Jamie Little on who uh, is announcing this, and, and uh, Craig, Chris Myers, both are heading to Daytona today to go to NASCAR. So I, I tweeted Jamie Little and Chris Myers and said, you know what, take Colton with you to Daytona. Because Cole's a hero now because he got screwed. Yeah. Um, put him in the pace car, you know, let him, let him wave the checkered flag or the, the, the green flag or something and make him a star down at Daytona because it's all Fox and make it a good deal. Turn it into something positive here. You know what this, and make you know what this screams to me, though? This screams to me like two things, like The Bachelor, and which I don't watch, and American Idol, which I also don't watch, but like where the runner-up becomes the, the big name. Right. right. Like, so yeah. maybe this is maybe maybe you're helping. Like Lauren Elena. Out. Maybe it is. Lauren Elena. Yeah. 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 So really, like, Lauren Elena. Yeah. I mean, my biggest question to you, Steve, is you don't have a problem with the way they mutilate the animals. You know, I I, I don't know enough about that to maybe <laughs> look make up an the American Veterinary I mean, if they Association. do, that's sad. They make them. If, do if, that. Well, if that's if that's if that's true, we if don't do win. that to our pets. You know, we. We do our pets. Wait a second. Your pets are not the as, same as, as a show pet at Westminster, though, because you right. love and care for your pets. Other people will mutilate their pets to make them look better. But I, I okay. think well, we've that's talked wrong enough too. about no, the dog the whole, pro- the, the, the whole process soured me on the entire process. It was wrong. You know, the, the well, judge just so you know, but it's himself. Like, but it's like, figure, it's like figure skating, right? Like, there's bias. You have oh, a yeah. favorite. They had a favorite going in. They already knew. But there's multiple pick, judges just... that can overcome bias. If you have multiple no. judges, no, multiple you can judges. Bias. Wait a second. I do a boxing show. There's multiple judges in boxing, and you three. know there's, there's no more crooked sport than boxing, because if you could buy one judge off, you could buy two or three or four. I mean, it's not that hard. All right. Okay. But, all right. So we're just right. going to go ahead and settle on you're wrong, and we're going to move on to Joe Flacco. Gets traded for the Baltimore Ravens to the Denver Broncos. Steve knows nothing about football, so I figured I would go to Sarah first on her opinion on this trade. Well, I just I I was I such a kind dick. Of getting, I was I was getting my Twitter my Twitter feed was coming in about the pessimism in Denver already. I mean, not you, Sarah. The, the Mike. announcement. The, what? What? Nothing. Let her talk, on. Steve. Jeez, I apologize. I, am, I mean, the, okay. So wait. Twitter, Twitter responses are coming in. Like I'm watching some of the Denver sports sports people talking about, right? The pessimism is already in, in Denver. The, the announcement was made an hour ago and everybody is already annoyed. I mean, it's, it's, it's still the end of the day. Joe Flacco has a winning record and is a good quarterback. I mean, I, I, I don't know what Denver is looking for necessarily, what the fans are looking for here. Cause it's, it's tough to say at this point, like I think always feeling is, Bring in a veteran quarterback that's proven to win, and let's see what happens. I mean, we didn't get it done this year. 
Well, my take on it is this. The, the problem with Flacco is there has been a rapid regression in his game, but I think that's been more from the team around him in Baltimore, especially offensively, where they tend to just draft defensive players and never give him any weapons. Um, I, I think the big question here is age and his health. But I think with what they gave up, Denver fans should be happier than hell because if you get Joe Flacco, it's 80% of what Joe Flacco was five years ago you got a chance to make the playoffs. And in that division, with the Chargers, who look like they're going to be there for a little while if Phillip Rivers can hold up, and with the Chiefs and Andy Reid, you know, at least you got John Gruden, so you don't ever have to come in last. But when you look at it, I mean, Joe Flacco is an underrated quarterback. He is a guy that Baltimore Ravens fans have bitched about for years. But when you watch him in the playoffs, this is a man that, you know, beat Tom Brady in New England in the playoffs a couple times. Actually, should have been a couple times. They had a stupid kicker that missed a kick. But I don't see where there is any drawback here because if he's old and he doesn't have anything left, you gave up what, a mid-round pick? They didn't give anything pick. up. Yeah, you give up a yeah, mid-round nothing. pick. It's worth a and, shot. And let's, I mean, let's call it spade a spade. Not to be, you know, I mean, every guy can admit this too. I mean, he has some great hair, which is going to look really good for some marketing in Denver. Just, I'm just saying, if you look at Joe Flacco, that sounds hair, like something like Steve Risley would say. Actually, no kidding, I'm laughing. Well, I'm thinking, where the hell would that comment come from? Yeah, like, it's like a Steve Risley comment. We're talking, about, <laughs> we're talking about all the upside. Thank you, Flacco. Mike. He's got really good hair. You don't get. I mean, football's tough. You wear a helmet, you lose your hair. It sucks. See, but Mike, I told you there was pluses in my, Mike. I told you there was pluses and minuses of having girls or women on our show this girls? is what you get when you, you said bring girls girls or women Jeez. women yeah. do run for show. president we start talking about <laughs> hair i mean i'm I, just talking I about gotta, the brady bunch. I, I, I talk about the brady bunch, the record, you know? just for the record i got i got in my twitter feed a picture of his hair from a male sports reporter so um it started somewhere else <laughs> okay. i think I think Flacco's a good pick. I think I think when you get a veteran quarterback, and and again, I think Denver always goes in with this optimism. Like I think the Broncos fans, like I've learned over the years of being here, and which is very different than the way Giants fans react in New York, is uh, is like everyone's so overrelated that maybe this like mid temperature feeling on him is a good thing, and then he can come in and, and actually impress people. Yeah, not as much as can I Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question of you, both you guys? Because, I, again, I realize I'm the dumbest person on the phone call right now. I get you that, and I, I'll admit that. I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah, um, no, I, I'll admit that. No problem. <laughs> what did they give up for Flacco? Mid-round draft pick. Nothing. They gave up okay. nothing. They gave up nothing. So, so basically, uh, both of you answer this. Mike, you're, you're a coach, and, and Sarah, well, I, 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 I think this. Flacco I don't think that they gave up. I one of your clients, Sarah. I, I the way you're think, talking about Flacco and his hair. I don't I think that they gave clients. up nothing. <laughs> I, I think this. I, I think this. I, I don't think they gave up nothing. I think the risk is worth the reward because I, I will tell you this. If you look at the teams that are consistently good, the New England Patriots, um, Andy Reid's teams, the thing that sets apart – teams that are consistently good from bad or the third through the seventh round of the draft because that's where you get your special teams players and that's where you get your depth and teams that don't draft well there the teams that start off the year seven and one and they get a couple injuries and they don't have a backup linebacker that's that good and all of a sudden they fall off the face of the earth so I do think you know let's look at it I mean a six round draft pick was Tom Brady at one point so you didn't give up nothing but I think the it's worth a shot because Case Keenum is Case Keenum, which means if you put studs around him everywhere, he could get you to the playoffs and maybe win you a playoff game. Joe Flacco has been proven. If you can put players around him, and with the defense that Denver has, with Vic Fangio, who's a defensive coach, now you've augmented that or offset that with a quarterback with a ton of experience who can come in, and if you can put enough weapons around him <laughs> – your offense, if it's if if your offense is ranked between ten and fifteen, with the defense you have, you should be a playoff team. Okay, so now can I finish my question? Great point, Mike. To Sarah or or to, to Mike, it, it, the Flacco, they, they paid nothing for him, basically, and got him. So they're basically looking at him as they need to win this year or next year with him because he doesn't have a lot of shelf life left. Is that correct, Mike? 
For sure, for sure. And I'm going to say this, and I want to, I want to be clear. I want to preface this with the comparison is not the quality of people. Um, however, always, in my opinion, always looking at this and saying it worked with Peyton, bringing in a an older right. quarterback that win is, now. that is seasoned and has proven to win. And Flacco has the Super Bowl. He's got NFC or AFC championships. Like he's got that. So. He is saying that model works. Let us try that because the young quarterbacks weren't working. The the one season wonder Case Keenum and I, I still think Case is a good quarterback. I I just think there wasn't anything behind it. Now he's like, okay, we know what did work in the year that we had Peyton Manning, a really amazing defense and a well veteran quarterback. And yep, that's that was what you get that was a, again, wait a second though. The Super Bowl they won. Hang on, Brock Osweiler. Mike, 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 let me, Mike, Mike, Brock let me Osweiler Mike, won the majority of the regular season Hang games on, for him. Hang on, Mike. Mike, wait. Sarah. I thought you asked us both don't a bring up Peyton. Don't bring up Peyton Manning because Mike hates Peyton Manning out yeah. the yin Oh, God, I love You will Peyton. lose a miserable <laughs> person. <laughs> Anybody that does what you, he did and it see, gets and here you go. Up. Now go, Mike. Now I'm going to shout up. Now you guys I mean, can fight it out now. All you got to do is look up the to. money he paid the student trainer in Tennessee when he sat her balls on her head when she was supposed to be his trainer. I mean, there, there's a sexual assault case there, and he paid out the ass for that. The NFL covered it up. So I, I Peyton Manning to me is, I mean, not a good person. I mean, I, I have a problem with go, anybody Sarah. that has a sexual assault history. And you can look that up. It has been proven. And the HGH just was sent to him or to his wife, which I've got no problem with him using that for that because it improved that. But Brock Osweiler won the majority of that games. The reason the Broncos won the Super Bowl that year is because their defense was one of the five or six best defense. When you look at the rules of the game now compared to where that was one of the greatest defenses in NFL history. So, uh, no, nobody will argue. Nobody will argue that. But, but having the best defense has not been has not won the Broncos any favors. Like their defense has played so well and has has depth to it, and it still does. But it's it's their offense hasn't been able to do much. And I think yeah, but that Brock is also and, and the offensive line has a lot wait, to do I think with that, that Brock, too. Brock had a good and and this is where you know and I and again this is this is not fact, this is just opinionated, right, of the fact that a lot of – there are some of these backup quarterbacks that do a better job coming in as a backup without the pressure of being the starter. But then the minute you put them in the starting role, it's like they're, it's like they're shocked, right? So, you know, it's, it's something to be said about being the guy with no pressure coming in, win us a couple games, get us here, and then let your veteran quarterback win it out. But the other thing is, is, you know – Peyton has that leadership aspect to him too in the locker he room, which helps. That's the and having him just yeah. <laughs> He doesn't. I mean, when, when I you look at him, I'm having a, this I have is talked. Be fun. I lit this I have talked to so many Colts players that played with him, guys that played with him in Tennessee, and that is not the case. I mean, there's a reason why Tom Brady beat him most of the time, and he was rolling with Edger and James and Marvin Harrison, who were Hall of Famers, and Tom Brady's throwing the ball to Wes Welker and handing it off to whoever the running back of the week is for them. So when you look at Tennessee, when they got to the big game against Florida, he lost to them all four years. They didn't beat him until the next year, the year after Peyton Manning, they won the national championship with T. Martin at quarterback. So I, I don't want to hear it. I mean, to me, do Peyton you, Manning is a great quarterback. Any, do I need? Do I need Sarah, to welcome to the grilling truth. I know. I mean, do I need to know about any other like really hardcore passions for people you don't like? Brett I just, Favre. I, I just oh wanted, God, like, no, no, he's chock full of them, Sarah. Brett so, Favre. Trust me, if you stay with us, he's chock full uh, of them. Brett, like 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 a bag of M and M's. He's chock full of passions of people he hates. <laughs> and I'm probably the top of his but list. He doesn't, so. But he doesn't hate Flacco. He definitely no, doesn't hate Flacco. No, because I think good. Flacco, no, Flacco's a good this move. is the thing. And Joe Flacco, ball, I don't think, is necessarily a great leader. But I think he's a very good quarterback. And the thing about Joe Flacco, the difference between him and Peyton Manning is this. Look at him in the playoffs. Look at their stats. Um, Peyton Manning, the Super Bowls he played in, you had a pick six that lost the game. You had the first game against the Bears, which was Rex Grossman, where he throws a couple interceptions. Uh, come on, he, he got to play against Cam Newton. And Cam Newton's a front runner. But 
when, when I look at Peyton Manning, if you look at him the year before that, if you watch him against the Seattle Seahawks, was that Super Bowl 48? They fall behind immediately, and you saw no fire. What you see from Peyton Manning, and the thing that always drove me nuts about him was if things are going wrong, you see him on the sideline, he's sitting there if he's head down. And I think this, to be a great quarterback, to be a great leader, to be great at anything, your body language tells you everything. Whenever I am coaching a football game, whether it was a professional game or it's my son's high school team, the first thing I look at when the other team walks out is I can tell you who their quarterback is, even if they don't have jerseys on right away. I can tell you which coach is the head coach. If I can't, I know we're going to beat the hell out of them because they have no leadership. You can tell a great player when he walks in the room. And I just don't get that from Peyton Manning. I think Peyton Manning looks like a nice guy. But like I said, I've never been able to get over the fact that the stuff that happened to him in 1997 at Tennessee, if that would have happened to a Cam Newton, he would have been destroyed from it. Instead, the NFL wants Peyton Manning to be the face of the NFL, so it doesn't get paid attention to. It's like Ray Rice. He gets suspended for three games, but once you see a video, all of a sudden his ass is out the door. So I, I just think that my biggest problem is if they want you to be the face of the NFL, they kiss your ass, they build you up. And when I saw him, I think Peyton Manning is a top 10 quarterback of all time. I would put him somewhere between 8 and 10. I don't think he deserves to be higher than that, just like Dan Marino does it. Because the difference is this. Who's your favorite quarterback of all time? I don't have a favorite. Oh, don't a favorite go quarterback of oh, all time we don't have is different. Time, oh. Montana than the or Brady? Here we go. It's yeah, got to be Montana. Go. Or Brady. Oh well, Montana. Montana is the best, and you know, let's, he's not. Let's remember where he went he's to not. college. He's not. He is Notre the Dame. second yeah. greatest of all time. What you have is you have Tom Brady, Joe Montana, who are who neck is, and neck. What? Well, Brady is definitively. I mean, you can't. Anybody who wants to sit and argue that Brady's not the best quarterback to ever play is like. Is yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's. But I can tell you this, Sarah. Yeah. I'm oh, a Cincinnati see, Bengals I fan. That. I would argue he's not the best quarterback. He's the best quarterback coach combination. Oh, no. I mean, because, ben wait Brady a second. Would be Brady Shut up, Steve. Belichick. Steve. Joe Montana had Bill Walsh, correct? Yeah. Okay. All great quarterbacks have a great coach. All great coaches have yeah. a great quarterback. You're Lombardi right. had Starr. Right. Landry had Stallback. You know, Bud Grant had Fran Tarkington. All these guys had somebody with them because you can't be great without the combination. You know, if Peyton right. Manning Bradshaw would have had been Chuck in Noll. New England. Bradshaw had Chuck Noll. Yeah. You know. yeah and, but there's and, no, but there's no, there's no quarterback. There's no other quarterback who has taken a lacrosse player and made him a winning wide receiver. I mean, Brady has, and part of that's Belichick, obviously, with the with the plan that they call and everything that they do. I mean, Most of it's Daniels Belichick. A great offensive coordinator. But, like, you watch Brady. Yeah, but, but Belichick's not the one out there dropping back in the pocket, realizing he can't move and yeah. looking for all different options. you got to be able to execute like, it, Steve. You know, yeah, I, I mean, Brady sees that, that's that, his contribution. Brady sees that field better than anybody it's else. That's his contribution, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing about Brady is this. Almost every Super Bowl that they have won, including this last one, there's a point in the last seven minutes of the game where he takes the ball, he goes the length of the mm -hmm. field, and he wins you the game. And the game no he lost – I mean, one was a blown, you know, a blown pickup by the right guard. He gets sacked. He fumbles the ball. That can happen. Happened to Montana before. And the other two, the Giants scored and left him like 20 seconds, which wasn't enough time to come back. Um, Joe Montana, right. I think, is undoubtedly the second best quarterback because of one thing or a couple of things people don't realize. Number one, Jerry Rice was only with him for the last two Super Bowls they won. The first Super Bowl that they won, Super Bowl 16 over the Bengals, I mean, Joe Montana won that Super Bowl with a team that had no running game. He was the second leading rusher. The leading rusher was Earl Cooper, who ran for 400 yards. And he won a Super Bowl yeah. with that team. And it's the same thing with Brady. Super Bowl 36, the first Super Bowl they won, that was won mainly with defense running the ball and Brady being able to make the plays at the end of the game. You fast forward, and they're winning Super Bowls with Brady throwing the ball 40 times, coming back from 28 to 3 down. So to me... It's those two. My next level is fairly far below them, but my third best quarterback of all time, I think, is John Elway. Because the first three Super Bowls he took the Broncos to, I don't know that there's any other quarterback in history that could have got those teams to the Super Bowl. I don't disagree. I mean, I think Elway's 
always a unique one. I mean, I think he's he's you know incredible. He's incredibly intelligent. And he's got a. I mean, he's super athletic, right? Like he, it's the perfect combo. It's he's different than a Brady who you know doesn't have what you would perceive on the outside as the athleticism that yeah, some the of these other quarterbacks Montana. have. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Right. Mike, can I ask a question? Yeah. Who was who was always was who was his, was Reeves his coach or was Dan Shanahan Reeves there? And then Mike Shanahan. Dan, Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves, Dan Reeves they, is they a coach that should okay. be in the Hall of Fame. Dan Reeves was a. Great I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that one hundred percent. So I don't think you can yeah. find a quarterback in the top ten except uh, Peyton Manning. I can't argue with that. That didn't yeah. have a great coach. Peyton Manning never had a legendary so said, coach. So it, well, well, and Manning and so did not a have a great coach. Per- yeah. And, and I'll take a different perspective on this because this kind of like ties back to what we were talking about with what I do for a living. Like if I look at somebody like Elway who, you know, he's super, he is super smart and he was a good, and he was talented as well, but he also worked hard. But the other big thing for me is when, as young athletes come up, you look at what he did. He owns the city of Denver. I mean, he owns it. Like everything about this city is John Elway and he did so much in his non football life to create business opportunities and like ongoing things here that everybody should look at somebody like him as this kind of complete package of he built, he built his own empire. Like he built his own John Elway empire. And it's yeah, but kind of the amazing thing is to watch. This, like the guy, is, the guy's tremendous. Yeah. It's easy for him to do <laughs> because that's the only great quarterback the Broncos have ever had. They didn't have anybody before him. You had Craig Morton, who was a good quarterback, helped get him to Super Bowl twelve, but there was really no great quarterback before him. And it's kind of like but being, it's, yeah, it's kind of like being the first great player anywhere. They build the statue to you, not to the guy that comes after you. Yeah, Mike, well, I may be dead fun. wrong it's here. Just... I may be dead wrong here, but didn't didn't uh, wasn't Elway originally drafted by the Colts, the Baltimore was, Colts? The Colts, yep. He was also and, a and, and draft he, pick he in the New York never Yankees. Played for him. Right. Yeah, he, he was, was going to play baseball. He's not going to play. He said, "I will not play for the Colts." And and then so what, Indianapolis could have he had did what Eli Manning. He Jerk. did the same thing Eli Manning did, and they're doing the same thing that they think Kyle Murray's going to do, which is he has the ability to say, "No, I will not play here," and and then get the team of his choice. Essentially, is what they're saying. But Elway did that, and Eli did that. Yeah, but well, that's I'm a whole betting, other show. Free agency. I'm betting Kyler we'll Murray yeah. is not John Elway or Eli. Yeah. Manning. Um, I would agree with that 100. percent Let's move on. Hang on. Before we go, let's let's let's, let's test Sarah's knowledge a little bit here. Last night, uh, Mike, you and I kind of touched on this. Duke comes back from 23 points down in the second half to beat Louisville in a game that Louisville pretty much for 30 minutes of the 40 minute game dominated. If I watch that game, Mike is Duke. Sarah is Duke. The team to beat in the tournament are they the best team in college basketball right now by far? I mean, I personally would never, ever bet against Coach K. I mean, that's, just, that's my personal opinion. I feel like he is, he is the man who, he's like, he's like a Bill Belichick. It's the same mentality. Give me he's a Bob Knight disciple. He's a Bob Knight disciple. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, he played for Bob Knight and so coached under I, Bob Knight. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think it's, he, he is a give him anything and he'll put it together. I mean, you know, there are obviously those years they don't win championships, but they still make it and they, and they have a good team and they, and they compete, right? This is different. I mean, they have incredible talent. And on top of that, this coach who can, who can do just about anything with whatever you give him. I mean, it's hard for me to ever root against him, well, bet against him or root against him. I mean, I always assume Duke's going to win in the end. But, but they're tremendous. I mean, it's, a, it's different to watch. But he creates Mike? teams. That's the difference. I mean, that's why Bobby Knight was so good, too, was they create teams. They don't create individual players on the field or on the court. They mm-hmm. are – they are. we can play five people together, and it's hard to beat us because all five of us play together and we play together well. And that's what Indiana was known for, too. Um, Mike, your thoughts on the game? They've got the best talent. I know. Talent. Because you love, you love Chris talent. Mack. I know, I know you're a Chris yeah. Mack fan, and they, I love Chris Mack. They, they've got think, the best I, I thought Chris talent. Mack are you going to shut up so I can answer your question, or are you going to continue to ask it? I'm just asking. I mean, the propane. What do you ask? I didn't even hear the question. He asked, the, he asked yeah. me the same question you did, but then he asked me the question again, and I was going to try to answer, but he kept going. Steve? 
Duke is the best team in the yeah. country. But if they do not shoot the three that well, you can slump off guard them and win a game. And they have not looked like they could shoot the three until the last three games of the season. I think that's the question. I think Gonzaga is the most capable team of beating them. And Gonzaga did beat them earlier in the season. And I think Mark Few is one of the few guys that won't get out coached by Mike Krzyzewski. So I would give Gonzaga a shot. You've got a handful of other teams that if they play well on that night, Michigan, even though I know they lost the other night, they play defense well enough that they may be able to stay in the game. I think this, talent-wise, I think this is the best college basketball team we may have seen in the last 20 years. Well, and you know Gonzaga has a great uh, – I think it's their point guard, to key, um, but we did an event a couple of, last year maybe with Josh Perkins. I, yeah. I mean, that kid is amazing. He's awesome. And he's, you know, it's, he's fun to watch. And I, I don't disagree with you. I think Gonzaga has a, has a great opportunity. I think their head coach is awesome too. And it's, but I think it's always, a, it's always a team. It's a head-to-head thing. You have to look at each one individually, right? Because on any given day. Well, and I think Gonzaga is anybody. the one team that can match up with Duke. Yeah. I, could, yeah. I so. wouldn't disagree with that. All right, um, Steve, we have now established, going through a couple sports and some inane Westminster whatever it is thing that you talked about, that Sarah knows probably more than you do. Um, So now we're going to go to Major League Baseball, Sarah, because Steve loves to talk about Major League Baseball. And we've got 100 or so free agents, I think, still unsigned. And my take on this is the reason this is happening outside of just money is I think the non-competitiveness of two-thirds of the league. I mean, I'm a Cincinnati Reds fan. They've all of a sudden decided to try to oh, win this is year. that so tough. I know. It used to. But this is the thing. The first team I ever remember watching was the Big Red Machine in 1975-76. So I got to see the greatest team that ever lived. So what the hell? It's never going to get any better than that or get near that. But... I still think the biggest problem is, outside of the money, is there's so many teams here in Major League Baseball that aren't even trying to win. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, I also, I mean, I talked about this a little bit with, with, another, um, with another sports person, and it's baseball trying. So I, I grew up on baseball. Like, I love baseball. And, you know, I watch baseball year-round for, every, for the news, for everything, because I love it. Um, but, you know, there is that lull period that they have when the season, when the playoffs start and your team doesn't make it or, you know, the, the World Series ends and you're kind of in the NFL. And so I think this is, quite honestly, just the entertainment of it, right, is Scott Boris saying, I've got the two big names. He's not competing against anybody because he's got both big names. So he realizes he can have all the attention on these two guys and make it a big deal. And I mean, you look at anything, I think we've we've been told that Machado is going to every single team in the league at this point, right? I, I don't know that there's really any team that hasn't been on the list that is hardcore pushing for him, which anybody who, who knows anything about sports knows that, like, this is just a gimmick to keep your attention. If you're in, you know, if you're in Miami or you're in L.A. or you're in San Diego or whatever, like, they just want to know that you're paying attention because guess what? Your team may sign Machado today, right? And, and I think that's really what it's coming from is, how do we keep fans engaged year round? And part of that is you've got these free agents, but you know, there aren't going to be the big names of Bryce Harper and Manny Machado every single season. So what are you going to do next or what's happening? What's going to happen next year when those big names aren't out there? I mean, I, yeah, there'll be another name, but is it going to be that substantial? Yeah. And the and problem, the problem they where have are these is, guys going to yeah. actually end up? Well, I, I think this, I think with Harper, it looks like the giants are the Phillies. I'm not sure about Machado. Oh, yes. So my pick last night, I, I said this to one of my one of my clients. I said Machado to San Diego and Harper to the Phillies. That's my prediction. Okay, Steve, what do you think? Um, I think that the person between the um, curtain and the box on <laughs> let's make a deal should take the box. Because I think the curtain's <laughs> going to be a zonk. 
I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know baseball well enough. To, I mean, you told me you were it, you studying know, I was it looking this morning. At, I thought you had something. I was, and, and I was looking at, at like Bryce Harper's stats. I and mean, this is a guy who's, you know, not a career three hundred hitter. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why is Bryce Harper such a hot property. You know, Machado came to L.A. and really didn't affect any change here to any great degree in L.A. And so I think that of all the athletes in various sports that that can impact teams, baseball seems to do the least when you bring a player to a team and spend big bucks on him. I mean, you know, that's just my team. But I'm not a baseball fan. So, you know, I'm an outsider on on baseball. It all depends on what you're looking for, right? Like that's that's the thing. Bryce from the well, very sounds beginning, to me they're so looking. Sounds from, to me, Sarah, that they're looking for filling seats. Is, right, is exactly. What, if they and bring a Bryce Harper, they're looking to fill seats. Correct. It's marketing. Right. And, yeah. It's marketing. You yeah. know, people are going to come to people are going to come to a game if Bryce Harper is there. Is the mentality and right. because of the Which excitement well around it theory. and. That two, yeah, bodes well to Mike's theory that two thirds of the major league baseball teams don't really care about winning. You know, they, they, they realize at the beginning uh, of the season they're dead in the water at the beginning of the season. There's a handful of teams that compete a year in and year out for for the World Series or the playoffs, and the rest of them just plug through their season, sell as many season tickets as they can, as many special promotion nights, and you know they sign a big player so they'll draw some more people in, and baseball moves on. That's kind of my thought on baseball. Well, this is the thing. Last year in Major League Baseball, there were three teams that lost 100 or more games and eight that lost 95 or more. That was the first time since 2002 that more than two teams lost 100 or more games. And only The only time since Major League Baseball expanded its season to 162 games that eight teams lost at least 95 games. And as I said, being a Reds fan, I, I can guarantee you that was true with them. Well, I mean, I went to, I actually went to a Reds game this year. That was the first time I've ever been to that stadium. But, I mean, it is. I mean, but then, but then you look at teams like Cleveland who then do spend the money and bring in the right personnel and then bring in the right players. And it's a process. But you have to be willing to invest in the process. Like, it's not an overnight process. It takes time. And they're going to be losing seasons in between. Stop. I mean, look at even the Rockies. Like, the Rockies have had some rough years, but – Man, they've built that team and they've kept a lot of their players and they've and they've done a good job with that. Um, and it's and again, it keeps the fans interested. I mean, it was way tougher to get Rockies tickets last year than it was the year before. Yeah, but then the problem is this: once you have a couple good years, those players all leave for bigger markets and more money. That's what happened with the Reds. Right. I mean, you had three or four mm-hmm. straight years where you had playoff teams, and then all of a sudden they give it up. The Marlins have won two World Series in the past from 1997, and I forget the other one in the 2000s, but as soon as they'd win it, you know, they would just sell off all the players, cut their costs, and cut their losses, and, you know, they won a suit. Well, go ahead. everyone ends up in New York. Or Boston, or L.A. And see, see, here's my feeble, because you guys are knowledgeable on this. I'm really, like I said, I'm not a baseball person, so I'm going to look at this from a fan perspective. You know, you take somebody like the Colts this year. Let's say they started off, what, Mike, were they 1-6 or something one like five. that at the beginning of the year? Then they win nine straight games. And I'm thinking the season's over and done with. You know, I'm burning my Colts jerseys. I'm ready to trash the season, say, yeah, we'll get a good draft pick, we'll move on. And then all of a sudden they win nine out of ten games. And they, they can change their stars in a matter of minutes. It seems to me that baseball teams waller in mediocrity for longer periods of time to where you lose the interest of following that team. Um, is that just me being a fan, or is there some mentality to that, Sarah? Does it just take that much longer? Because I know you got 16 games versus 162 games, so obviously, but it's like the Reds have sucked for many years. And, Mike, you may they may be good this year. I think you said that they may get good they this year. They might be. We might be 500. But, yeah. But 500, see, you're shooting for 500. I'm thinking now the Colts are contending for the the Super Bowl next year. Now, I'm ludicrous because I'm a fan of the Colts, but I'm saying that's a team now that went 9 out of 10, they come out of nowhere, and they just light it up all of a sudden. And I'm thinking the season's over. And at the end, I'm not missing a game. I'm not going anywhere off my couch because I 
finally get national televised games with the Colts to get to watch him in L.A. because um, we don't get East Coast games on the West Coast. And, and But baseball just seems to just flounder in mediocrity way too long. Like Mike said, such a great point, Mike. Just There's two or three franchises that out there that try and win the thing every year. The rest of them just like, we'll take your money and we'll you know give you a hot dog and a pop and a beer and we'll do the seventh inning stretch and some peanuts and we'll call it a season. Yeah, Plus, and, uh, it is. T- it's good. tough though. It's tough though because take the player perspective, right? Those guys want to win. Those guys don't want to lose. They don't want to be in a losing. They want to make money. They wanna, they and, wanna, they wanna make, and they want to make. They want to make. And they well, and and that's the thing, right? And that's the next thing. Is the next thing is they want to make want money. They don't want to win. They don't care. Yeah, they do. They, but they want I, their I next see contract. Guys, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sarah. The Dodgers have been in the playoffs the World Series the last two years, right? Why does Machado want to leave the Dodgers? He's got the best chance of anywhere to win he a World Series ring who says, staying with the Dodgers. Who says he wants to leave the Why Dodgers? Why does he want to the leave? Dodgers he wants want more him. money. The Dodgers don't want he him. He wants more money. The Dodgers don't want him. Well, then you know the what? You, if you want a ring, if you want to win, you say, I'll take a pay cut to stay here because I have money. <clears throat> I want a ring. Yeah, but what is second. And the Dodgers yeah. have been there two years in a row. No, with him, with him, I think the more important question is why do the Dodgers not? And that may be a bad example. Yeah, it's well, like how about this? Not knowing baseball. I, I think this. When you look at this, if it's not that, I think the Major League Baseball Players Association's biggest problem, the way current free agency structure is, that to become a free agent, I think you have to have six years of full service. Which, when you look at the age yeah. of free agency right now, the typical player reaches free agency after the age of 30. So the average age of a free agent signed this winter so far is like 32 okay. and a half Fair. years old. Um, when you look at it, it, position players generally peak, Sarah, between 26 and 28. Pitchers peak even yeah. earlier. So what you're doing is maybe you're having it where I don't want to give Manny Machado a 10-year contract because he's 32 years old. So if, maybe if the Major League ba- Baseball Players Association, you know, tries to pass something where maybe this is at four years or three years, you're getting players well, in that's, their prime. But see, that, but that, and I think that's the biggest thing is a, that I, I was hearing chatter that the players were like, are not thrilled with these shorter length term contracts that are coming in and all this. But, you know, you got to wonder if Machado had signed earlier – and not waited this long and signed. Well, the Yankees made him offer pretty quickly. Would look, he have signed? Look, with, but what? Because Machado wants to make money. He wants guaranteed money for a long, like, 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 for, uh, absolutely. J-Lo's boyfriend. What is J-Lo's boyfriend's name? What's A-Rod. his name? I can't think of it. A-Rod. Yeah, 25 year, $250 million. He, he's still getting paid by the Yankees. Uh, you know, that guy is still getting a big fat paycheck every month from the Yankees. And he will for a long time. These guys want to make money, you know. If, if and I know you got to, you got to get out of here. I know, uh, sir, you got to take off, and, and we'll, we'll pick this conversation up again. But why would not like a Bryce Harper say, you know, what, I'm going to go to the Red Sox or I'm going to go to the Yankees because I've got more money than God. I've got plenty of money. I want to win. I want to go to a team that can win a World Series. I don't care about because making do you be, twenty-seven million versus question. twenty-four million? No, but here's the question. You know? This is this is always the question. Does a Bryce Harper want to take a role of second to an Aaron Judge or John Carlos Stanton? That's that's the question. But, you know, and here's the thing: my answer to you money. on that is this: baseball, of all the sports in the world, baseball is the most individual team sport. You get up there alone and you bat. You get in your position and you field. And of all the teams that don't rely on everybody else, to, and, but, you, know, you, you got to hit the relay. Not, you you got to do things. But, but baseball is the most individual team sport. So uh, what does Bryce Harper I, care I disagree, if he's but, playing against Aaron but, Judge or anybody else? Just go get on the best as, group of players you can play to win. But you're not as marketable, right? Like, and that's where the ego and the money comes. Well, in then too, you're back to the money thing. Like to, I said, you don't want to win. That's right. What Mike, but you that's go what to Mike the Phillies, said. You just want to make money. You go to that's the what Phillies, baseball's all about. You, you go so to the Phillies, like the and you can be the face of the team, which is which is more Great, appealing. Super. Yeah. What sport do you like, Steve? It's not about the money. College basketball. <laughs> no, that's all about the money. Well, too. no, that's big time. All, all about money. the money. Oh, the all players all don't get the money. money. Everybody, yeah, there is no sport. But I'm telling you, for the individual person, 
you know, I, I, you know, Mike, there's no logical answer to that because ultimately everybody, it's about the money. I could say NASCAR, but NASCAR is about the money like anything else. Um, but most drivers, like you take a Kurt Busch from NASCAR that got booted from Stuart Haas Racing, which is one of the two or three premier teams, had to go to Chip Ganassi Racing, which is a lower echelon team. You know, but I think Kurt Busch is going to drive his ass off this year and, and try and win races because, you know, I don't, I think NASCAR is a sport that may be less about money because the money's reversed. You know, you have to bring money into the game. When you, if you want to be a NASCAR or an Indy, a race car driver, you have to bring money with you. That's what made Danica Patrick so, 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 so demand, demand. She was a, a cash cow to anybody that brought her in the sport because there were so many people that wanted to market her and have her be endorse her products because she was a female driver, but she brought money. And eventually, because she never won, that went away, and that's why Stuart Haas jettisoned her, and that's why she retired from racing. She didn't want to quit. She lost her sponsorship. But baseball, to me, is a sport, as they all are, but I think people in the NFL make moves to go to teams that they think can win them a Super Bowl ring. And certainly money factors into it. Of course it does. Um, but I, baseball to me just seems a sport that people are making moves because they want that 10-year, $400 million contract. When they bat, you know, they, baseball players fail as often as weather people. At 300, you're, you're a Hall of Famer. If you get it right three out of ten times, you're in the Hall of Fame. Think about that. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's a lot harder to hit a 95 yeah, no, mile I know an hour it is. fastball I know it is. is to shoot right. a basketball or catch right. a football. Listen, to Sarah, I know you got to go. Are you coming back, Sarah? We scared the crap out of you. You're never coming back. I, You know, I'm from New Jersey. Like, there's very little that scares me. Yeah. As as Jersey here, with the Italian background. Very little. <laughs> Well, don't but tell anybody you're from New Jersey. Cause that's that's nothing you want to claim either. So. Oh God, it's great. We got the like 201 pride that you know runs through your blood. You can't ever leave Jersey behind. It doesn't matter where you go. 201's the area code in New Jersey, by the way, Steve. <laughs> yeah, 202. Yeah, I I know. Hey, yeah, that's fine. Uh, 201 is because I got 202 a buddy that lives in New 202 is DC. Two, and 212 is New York. I know the freaking area code. <laughs> All right. All right, Sarah, you want to tell everybody where they can find you Thanks. on social media? Uh, social media, Twitter and Instagram are the same. It's just my, it's Sarah Uram, and that's it. It's just my name. And then you can uh, go to the APCAgency.com, check it out, learn more, buy the book. Do it right. all. Are you coming back next week? Are you coming back next week? Yeah, I'll come back next, I'll come back next week. I think we've got to talk about soccer. We're, the MLS season's almost starting. Sure we will. All right. <laughs> sure we will. All right. Let's that. just go to soccer hey. after baseball. Woohoo! What? There's nothing wrong with baseball. Guys, I'm not going back to the dog show next time. No. Golden Retriever no. champion. Exactly. John. Plus, best dog in the world. Maybe it'll the third greater dog so. than the Golden Retriever. All right. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, guys. Have fun. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Guys, after Bye, this Sarah. break, we'll be back with Bobby Sheridan from the Sheridan Report. Hey, sports fans, Chris and Graham here from the Gruelin' Truth Network. Baseball's boring. It's too slow. Where's the fun in it? If you think that, then why the hell aren't you listening to Out of Love Field with us on the TheGruelinTruth.net? On our show, we make baseball way more than just a bunch of numbers. You laugh with us, probably yell at us, and hopefully learn a thing or two from us. Ever wonder what it's like to be a Major League umpire or why they made the call they did? Lucky for you, we have our own umpire on the show, even have big league umpires stopping by from time to time, and even the occasional big leaguer or two. And all of that's just the first 10 minutes. Come on by and join the fun. Listen to Out of Left Field with Grant and me every week on thegruelingtruth.net, and give us a follow on Twitter and Facebook. Just search Out of Left Field with Chris and Graham and like our page on Facebook, or use our Twitter handle, at OOLeftField. It's that simple. See you all this week when we put the ball in play on out of left field. All right, guys, we're back on Survive in Advance. I'm your co-host, Mike Goodpaster, with Steve Risley. Steve, we got to call Bobby right now. All righty. So we can get Bobby on to talk about his pick last night where he guaranteed 
Marquette would cover and beat DePaul, and he was correct. As always. Bobby, Bob, Bobby's a genius. I mean, I, I, I don't screw with him on his picks. I, I don't mess. You know, well, I, and here he I'll is have now. fun with him on other things. Here he is now, straight from his Marquette <laughs> DePaul guarantee last night on The Grueling Truth. Help us welcome Bobby Sheridan from the Sheridan Report. How you doing, Bobby? Hey, Mike. Those are beautiful words. And the Valentine's Day special came in. I was happy for Steve on that one and for all the listeners. And we've got two more tonight that that are in that realm. Well, let's go. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me how to bet. I I didn't bet. So my wife doesn't get a Valentine's Day dinner or nothing. I don't know. I have no idea. (laughs) He doesn't know how to bet. I have no clue. There's a lot of things Steve doesn't know how to do. Yeah, you're exactly right. There are a lot of things I don't know how to do. Like, shut up. Like, (laughs) argue sensibly. You know, know, and how to gamble or bet. So I don't know. There's at least three things. Well, when we we get together for lunch, Steve, later on this month or, you know, next month or so, well, I'll help you out with that part. We'll get you squared away. And Mike's already got you squared away with the mybookie.com until until it's legalized in California. We'll just get you online with the offshore account. And you'll be set up. Well, it's mybookie.ag. And if you sign up through the Grueling Truth, the Grueling Truth gets a little bit of money there. What is AG? What, what is AG? Is that Argentina or something? Yeah, that's what it is, Steve. No. Jesus. What, All right, what Bobby, AG? what's your two big picks for tonight? Well, wait a minute. What is AG? It's the what same thing as .com. It's just... Part of the address. okay, but there's a dot net dot com, there's a dot edu. What is it? Dot eg, ag. It's the same as dot com, it's, it's a different dot country AG. because there's a dot uh, yeah. Netherlands, there's a you dot NL, there's a dot. I don't know, it's probably in the island somewhere, but Bobby, well, I'm looking it up right can, now. Can we, I'm okay. looking it up. When you look it up and you is. sit there and you be quiet, Bobby, go ahead. <laughs> you be quiet. Dot, I love it. A G. Uh, Bobby, Let's see. I, Bobby is trying to talk, Stephen. Go ahead, Bobby. I t- sound like I'm teaching kindergarten. Okay, <laughs> okay Mike. Well, we got uh, – I'm going to give out three plays right now. Uh, two of them are top plays. One is a, free, is a free play that's already on the site, and that free play is uh, the Wizards tonight plus 11 over the Raptors. Okay, that's a free play. Now, I'm going to give out two top plays and talk about each. And that will leave two more plays on the report that I'll save just for the subscribers. And one of those is in the Grizzlies and Bulls game. And we won't go over those two. But we will go over two tonight. And one of them will be the good news for your Pacer fans. We're going to get that that game back that we dropped with them a week or so ago or two weeks ago on air when we came on and, and promoted them and uh, or what, did we win that one? No, it was a win over the Lakers. That's right. I'm thinking about yeah, something else. Well, we're going to come right yeah. back. Yeah, it was a win. We're going to come right back with them and uh, tonight. And, and this is a spot that it, it's a no-brainer. It, it's one of those spots where you see the line. You already know the numbers behind the line because you follow it, you know, like like I do. And, and then you just look for reasons. Okay, yeah, you dig a little deeper, and it's, and it's a slam dunk in five minutes. And, and that's the Pacers tonight. They're, they're getting three and a half over the East leading Bucks. And the Bucks have a lot of good numbers, no doubt. I mean, they're leading the Eastern Conference for, for a reason. But when you get Indiana, a team like Indiana at home, getting points, first of all, they're at 80% play uh, as a home underdog this year. They're 4-1. and one. They're a 59% play in all home games, okay? And then they're 53% in conference. So you know they're just a solid team in that regard. And so you – you, you know it's Indiana or nobody. You're not going to want to lay points on the road in a matchup like this. So you dig a little deeper, and you realize that Indiana has, you know, won six in a row, and they're going to be playing their second game with, with, with Wes Matthews. And that's a really big thing because Milwaukee, their they're opponent tonight, and many teams that are in the playoff hunt right now wanted him. And they wanted him to come off the bench as a veteran who averages 14 points. They wanted him to come off the bench. He's got playoff experience. And he chose Indiana. And how lucky for your fans because he had an opportunity to start. McMillan in the front office said, yeah, you come right in and start. That's what we need because you're replacing all the depot. That puts Evans back to being a sixth man, back on the second unit where he was successful before the injury. And so Indiana is going to play their second game with Matthews in the lineup, and that's going to help them a lot. And, yeah, Indiana's you know, up to the uh, three seed right now, too. Two games ahead of Boston and Philadelphia. To, 
Yeah, isn't that something? And, and they're really just trying to hang on to, to the fourth. I mean, because that would give them home court advantage in the first round. And so, you know, that it's just good stuff. And, and you want to talk about good stuff again is Miles Turner, you know, how blessed the organization is to have him. You, when you're going against Antikimpo, you've got to have a strong front court. You've got to have guys that can defend down there and at least battle him on the glass and things. And you are you got more than that with your team. you got three or four strong front court guys, but you've you got probably the the, the uh, least or the most underrated player in the league. I and mean, this, this guy's a star, and he, he's not an all-star yet, but he, he, he will be and should be. But this Miles Turner is fantastic and one of the top – three or four defensive players in the league and he'll at least limit and to Kempo the best he can. And, you know, each team has won a game on their home court. So this will be game three of this matchup. And this could be a second round playoff matchup. And uh, it, it, it's a fun one to watch. I think this is one sees even Steve's going to want to watch this one tonight. So we like the Pacers. Okay. So that's a, that's a nice play tonight. Plus three and a half. I, I think they got a good shot to win it straight up. Although let's take the three and a half and go with there from there. Um, and then the second game, and, and if I'm talking too much and you want to slow me down, that's fine, but I, fine. I just I get fired up. Uh, the second game is, uh, let's go to the jump to the college realm now where let's see if we can follow up our Marquette when you had a lead in about that. This is the first thing I thought of. I thought, okay, well, we're in that realm with this game as well. It's a different level of play a bit. We're going to go to the Big Ten and drop down two or three levels we're going to have Rutgers uh, visiting Northwestern and you know until and I didn't watch this game but until the Duke Louisville game came out last night the way it came out Northwestern owned the most heartbreaking loss of the year in my opinion they blew a 15 point lead over Iowa at home with only four minutes to play they lost that game and it was a really really tough loss and so you know rebounding that was a Sunday defeat also guys and so they're going to play now in a Wednesday game after that kind of a loss and um, this is going to be very difficult for them to rebound and then you you realize that Rutgers is coming in and a lot of good things are happening for this team Uh, their coach they're coming off of a loss Saturday at Illinois and we all know what that means now I mean Illinois is the most improved team in the conference, you know, and they've won five in a row and they just beat Michigan state and, and they beat records on Saturday and a high tempo game. And that's what the records coach has been wanting them to play at a high tempo. They, they do pretty well on the paint and he wanted them to get out and, and they did a great job of that. They lost in the nineties. It was 95, 92, I think in overtime. And the coach played the game. He lost his mother in the, that morning on Saturday morning. And, after the game, he, he talked to the team about how much it meant to them, that how, how, they, how he, they battled so well and so hard, how much it meant to him. And they came out of that game feeling like a win almost, you know. And um, Northwestern came out of their game really pretty devastated. And so that's what you've got working, you know, into this matchup tonight. And, and you've got records with one extra day to prepare. So let's go from there, okay? Let's just go right from there. Rutgers is getting five and a half in this spot. And Northwestern – is going to be a really poor play as a favorite because they don't score a lot. They they got the 12th, they're ranked 12 out of 12 in the conference in offensive efficiency and they don't score a lot. So the bottom line is having to cover a spread is going to be difficult. Number 1, number 2, you look at some of the keys of the game. Rutgers has out-rebounded their opponents. They have a plus 42 margin over the last 6 games. Meanwhile, Northwestern has lost 8 of the 12 games rebounding edge eight of the last 12 okay you look at transition record we talked about the transition and the points are now getting in transition well the first matchup with northwestern which northwestern won at Rutgers, so this is a revenge spot for Rutgers. um Rutgers still dominated the paint 28 16 points in the paint played the game without their best big man a guy named omo rui o-m-o-r-u-y-i omo rui He's back tonight and playing well. So those things should all favor uh, records. And then then free throws. Uh, Northwestern attempts the least amount of attempts in the conference, 12 out of 12 attempts. Rutgers is in the middle of the conference. And, you know, the problem there is they're not making as many. They're they're making only 60%. So the keys are 
They're going to win the rebounding edge, which means a W in my book. They're going to win the transition, which means a W to me. And if they just make their free throws, that'll secure it. So this game tonight is a strong play on Rutgers on the money line. You can take the money line here, Mike. They're probably plus, and I'll look it up, they're probably plus a dollar eighty or something like that, um, maybe a dollar sixty-five. I'll look it up, but they're getting five and a half as well. So I, I've already placed bets on both myself. and So that's two of the three top plays. Today's a big day, and uh, we've already hit our first two ATP matches this morning. Got off to a slow start this week with those, but we've already hit two underdogs. Boom, boom, they're there. So everything's looking good, guys. Thank you for letting me get my plays out and not have to start over four times. Hey, so you know, <laughs> I've had like two or three different yeah. booking places yesterday that were sending me messages wanting to know if they could be on this show if they gave me a free play every day. <laughs> Bookie bashers or well, some shit. I don't know. I've never heard of them. But they sent me like two or three messages wanting to know if they could come on the show. And I'm like, no, we've already got the best, so we don't need bookie bashers. <laughs> but, I appreciate all right, that, so I what think, happened? I think you do, too. What happened on this day? On this day, Mike, uh, I did not uh, brief myself. I think we have something... Can you help me with that, Mike? Uh, I didn't re- look at the. I don't have a Steve. You got it pulled up. Yeah, Rocky Here, Marcion, I'll get, I'll get it. Lee, Lee Savold on a thirty-nine oh, yeah, yeah. win. Third, thirty-third NBA All Star game, the four in Inglewood, California, East meets West, Ooh, and Julius Ring MVP. In nineteen ninety, Larry Bird Celtics ends NBA free throw streak of seventy-one games. Yeah, I think the first two are great. So those are the three he's picked, and but I will tell you that Dot AG is Antigua and Barbuda which is where uh, Pablo Escobar has all of his mo- billions of dollars stored. So I would stay cool. the hell away from so there. So go check out my That whole country is probably going to. Um, <laughs> yeah, think, there you go. Well, my uh, he, AG, along with, um, along with uh, good God, look at the companies that are. Attila the Hund LLC is registered on a dot .ag. Blue Razor Domains. A core Internet Council of Registrar. Okay. This is like not where you want to go and put your money. I'm telling you what. <laughs> Dwight well, D. Eisenhower LLC is located at, on, on dot .ag. <laughs> Mike, oh, let me right, take I'm over sorry. here for a second. Yeah, Mike, please. trust me on this one, okay? Yeah. Mike, trust me on this one. Um, and I'll and I'll be really back in your your sponsor, the, uh, the my bookie place because they have a good reputation. Uh, I myself yeah, use. I, know. I don't use them, but I'll, maybe I'll. Able to open up an account just for grueling truth purposes, but um, I use their. They're I not even listed on here. Yeah, um, I have two accounts, and, li- and it's it, 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 it's not what you think. This is what keeps people from from you know betting um, until it becomes legal in their state because they're really leery about you know um, sending money. But it's 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 not. It hasn't been a problem at all. Uh, if you if you look at it, it's it's uh, it's fears that shouldn't be there, Steve. Um, these places have been around a long time. They're making Bobby. I'm having money. fun with you. All right. I I, I because no. don't worry about it. I, Move on. No, I know, but I, I want. I I'm don't care. About this. I want I want the fans to know that they can open up a an offshore account and it it is safe. I mean, I um uh, I I just know so many people that that are doing well with it. And, it's it's coming to your state soon. You know it is going to be there, um, and, and when it does, it, this thing's just going to blow up because there is that hesitation, just like you were joking about. But that is a true hesitation from a lot of people. And you know, um, I can tell you right now on my main account, I have a lot of money in that account, and I've had a lot of money in there for a long time, and they they paid every time I've wanted to take some out. So, uh, and I could tell you who that is, Steve, off air if you want. Open up something there. No, but my book, don't worry about it. Oh, okay. You know. I do have good. I've heard good reviews on my bookie. So, for the grueling truth, they are taking a sponsor that is reputable for sure. I just wanted to say that, Mike, just for for yep. our cause. You know, as a grueling yeah. truth. Um. So, yeah. 1983 NBA All Star Game. The thing I remember there was Marvin Gaye and the national anthem. I still think it was one of the greatest renditions of the national anthem I've ever seen. Have you guys ever seen it or heard it? I have not. 
I heard, I, 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 now that you say that, I do remember that he played there, and it was, I remember Magic Johnson, because it was at the Forum, and uh, I remember just how inspiring that was for so many people, and, but I have not listened to it. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I've actually got a DVD of the game. Yeah. But it was a hell of a game, too, because you had Larry wow. Bird, Dr. J, and all those guys. Um, what else was on there? The on what was, are, you, are you asking me because I'm the only yeah, one who's got on pulled up? Rocky Marciano defeats Lee Savold for his 39th straight win. Oh, you got his name right. Yeah. Rocky Marciano. There you go. Mike, I'm watching tell me Marvin Gaye singing. I'm watching Marvin Gaye sing yep. the National Anthem. Uh, Mike, that was his 39th straight win. How many? What, how many did he get in a row? What, what did he retire at? He was 49 and 0. He retired at 49 and 0. The interesting okay. thing about Rocky Marciano <laughs> is this, though: he fought under another name and lost his pro debut. He fought a few more Ooh. amateur fights, and then he turned pro again and never lost a professional fight at 49 and 0. Um, I, oh, I think wow. I think he's one of the most underrated fighters of all time. I mean, he was talented. He wasn't necessarily easy to hit the way people think. He had a little bob and weave, kind of like Mike Tyson before, you know, the women and Don King did him in. Uh, he was a savage body puncher. But the thing about Rocky Marciano is he beat Ezra Charles twice. He beat Jersey Joe Walcott twice, who were two of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Actually, Ezra Charles would probably be, and most people didn't know what they're talking about, it's top 10 of all time. He was a light heavyweight champion. Ezra Charles, probably the greatest light heavyweight of all time, even though he was never the light heavyweight champion, because the champion at the time would never fight him. But he moved up, um, had some great fights with Jersey Joe Walcott, beat, beat Joe Lewis. It was an old Joe Lewis. But Rocky Marciano is a guy that gets a bad rap. And the thing about Marciano is he died in a plane crash in a cornfield. I think it was in Iowa in 1969. But the thing about Marciano is he was a tight ass, kind of like Steve. And when, <laughs> when he died, they actually found out that he had like $3 million in cash stashed inside of his mattress because he didn't trust banks <laughs> and didn't want to pay the IRS. <laughs> well family got some good surprise <laughs> yeah they did so he, he yeah, that's, didn't that's trust nice. that but what are the greatest heavyweights of all time um mike shashevsky 72 today i bet he yeah, got saw that and he shares a shares a birthday with a pretty pretty good receiver randy moss yeah because usually when you randy think moss. of mike shashevsky the next thing you think about is randy moss <laughs> i know Hey, and the thing weird. is this, though. Those Randy people. Moss was a great high school basketball player. You remember White Chocolate, Jason Williams? Yeah, yeah. They actually played together in high school and won a state championship in West Virginia. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, Williams went wound up going to Florida, right? Uh, and then wound up being... Uh, I don't Sacramento remember Keith. where he went to college at. I know Moss went... To, yeah, I think Wilson or Williams was Florida. And then I know he played for the Kings among other teams in the NBA. But, yeah, I've, I've actually got the videotape of the state championship game they played together. And Randy Moss probably, I mean, he, he could have played, he could at least competed off the bench in the NBA. He was a great athlete. <laughs> he went to Marshall, correct? I mean, uh, yeah, he went to a... Marshall. The quarterback at the time when he was at Marshall, I think to start off with was Eric Kresser who ended up being like a third-string Bengal or Bengals quarterback for a few years. They won a Division One AA national championship. And then Chad Pennington came in and was the quarterback the last couple of years he was there. And that's when they made the transition to Division One. And I think they actually went to a couple bowl games there the first year or two they were Division One. But, all right, yeah, Steve, that's, you got that's anything cool. else before nope. we wrap it up? Nope. Okay. Bobby, you got anything else before we wrap it up? Tell everybody where they can find you. Well, they can find me at Sheridan Report, you know, Twitter purposes, and then uh, the website where you can get those other two games that I did not give today. You can get them at uh, thesheridanreport.com for $10 daily. We can get you hooked up, and there's two plays 
that I did not give out that I like. This is a huge card. This is a big card, and you know, I, I'm really excited about these games tonight, and and um, I'm really excited about the ATP bouncing back for the Early Risers Club, and they hit two dogs this morning, and on our way to a third one. The third one, as we're speaking right now, is uh, in a tiebreaker for the, for the whole match. So. Hopefully we'll win that one. Good karma for that one. And, and I'm going to give you the, the uh, money line on our, on our Northwestern game. I'm looking it up right now. Hopefully I can find it quickly. There's so many games. There it is. Uh, plus $2. Rutgers, you can get 2 to 1 on the yeah. money line. So I would definitely take a little bit on the money line there and then about double the amount you put on the money line, take to 5.5. Okay. All right, Bobby. Everybody, if you want to win some money, you still need to change your name to Sonny. But if you want to win some money, <laughs> go find the Sheridan Report, Bobby Sheridan. Um, I want to remind you, Inside Boxing Daily will be tonight at 11 o'clock with me and Jeremiah Pricer. You can check out last night's show, which was Baines Martirosian, who has a beef with Don King, who to- told a lot of interesting stories about the corruption with the steroids, Don King, and boxing. So make sure you check that out tonight. Do we have another NASCAR show with Bobby Sheridan added to it with you and Alex Gray, Steve? Yeah, we do. All right. Um, Make sure you check me and Steve out tomorrow where we will have for sure Cole Hanna. And Bobby, you in to do a little NBA report? Sure. I love love talking NBA. Uh, Is that something going on tomorrow or? Yeah, tomorrow with Cole Hanna. We just got our little NBA stuff. That'll be at 12 o'clock. If you oh. can make it Eastern, that'd be 9 o'clock your time. So make sure oh, you okay. check. Oh, come us. on earlier. Okay. Yeah. So make sure. Okay. It, it may oh, be 1230 yeah. because we may have an NFL agent on. I'm just waiting to get a confirmation from him. But either way, make sure you check out Survive in Advance tomorrow. Make sure you go to iTunes and you like us, comment us, rate us. Everything you do there, you can follow us on YouTube. You can follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher. Everywhere you find sports podcasts, please go rate us. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a solid rating. We'll appreciate it. So, for Sarah Uran, Bobby Sheridan, Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.